Hey everyone, my name is Tristan and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'll show you how you can make your own Phase 2 Clone Trooper helmet completely out of EVA foam. If you want to follow along with this video, you can purchase the templates over on my Etsy store. And make sure you watch the whole video because you might learn a trick or two and at the end there's gonna be an epic b-roll of the final result. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I already made a Clone Trooper helmet almost a year ago but as you can see, this new one just looks a lot better. The reason I could make this new helmet so accurate is because the templates were pulled from this 3D printed helmet. Yes, this means I now own a 3D printer, which is awesome, and I'll definitely do some 3D printed projects on this channel in the future. But not everyone has a 3D printer, so let's get into making this EVA foam version. Here are the templates you'll need to make the helmet. To keep this video from being too long, I've already traced all the template pieces on the right thicknesses of EVA foam. All thicknesses are specified directly on the templates. For all the pieces that are more than 10mm thick, I simply stacked multiple pieces of foam together to get the right thickness. It's time to cut out our pieces. I like to use a box cutter and a hobby knife. I use the box cutter mostly for straight and slightly curved cuts, and I use the hobby knife for tight curves and thinner foam. As you can see, most parts have little hash marks. Those are registration marks, which will help us properly line up the pieces later in the assembly process. This piece is some kind of vent at the back of the helmet, and it's made from 8mm foam plus 3 2mm foam strips glued on for additional details. Gluing those details before cutting out the piece will give it a cleaner look. It's finally time to assemble the helmet, and we'll start with these 5 pieces. Before gluing anything, it's a good idea to heat form each piece using a heat gun. The two dome pieces need a compound curve and the other three pieces only need a simple one-way curve. To glue foam parts together, I like to use contact cement because it gives the cleanest seams possible. We'll first glue the darts on the two dome pieces together. A trick when adding glue to your darts is to fold the piece in half to apply the glue evenly on both edges at the same time. After giving the glue a couple minutes to dry, I carefully close up those darts making sure the seams are flush and as clean looking as possible since those seams are the most visible on the helmet. Once you're done closing up the darts, you can simply glue the two dome parts together following the registration lines to keep the dome from looking crooked. The next piece to glue on is the 5mm strip that goes around the back. This piece needs to be glued flush with the inside of the helmet. This will create a nice inset effect about 3mm deep from the outside. And I think this looks pretty good. Let's move on to the faceplate. First, carefully glue the two sides together. Don't worry about the seam since you'll get rid of it once you cut out the visor. And make sure that you assemble the helmet with the visor still on, or else your helmet will look super distorted once you're done building it. Now you can simply glue the visor to the dome flush with the front. This means once you get to the indented part, you stay 3mm above it. On the version of the template I used in the video, the visor piece doesn't quite meet at the back. Don't worry, this problem has been fixed for the final templates available to you. And now we're left with a nice base to build on. Before making any other part of the helmet, you'll have to glue on the strip that goes around the helmet. It's 5mm thick and it has the same width as the strips of the visor piece we just glued on. You don't have to make it exactly the right length since you can just cut off the excess once you get to the back. And now, using a rotary tool, you can quickly clean up this part right under the detail strip. It's much easier to do it now than after adding the back pieces. It's time to make the cheeks and you'll need those four pieces. The line right here is supposed to be an undercut, so simply flip the piece around and cut halfway through the foam using a sharp blade. This will let you fold the piece on that line like a hinge. Now, after applying glue to the pieces, you can simply glue them together as shown on screen. And here are the finished cheek details. All you have to do now is glue them directly on the faceplate. I start with the back seam, since it's the easiest, and then move on to the front to get a clean, sharp edge. Let's make the front respirators, and you'll only need the two pieces at the top. The other ones are a mistake on my part, you'll see why later. Before assembling the pieces together, we need to round up some edges. First, there's the three straight edges on the smaller piece, and the bottom of the bigger piece, but not the middle part where there's an inward angle cut. By the way, for this entire build, I only used a stone bit on my rotary tool. I like how smooth the edges come out when using it. Now let's heat form the smaller piece into a very pronounced dish shape and the bigger piece gets compound curves all around and a peak in the center. 
Then you can quickly close up the four darts on the bigger piece and of course glue on the smaller piece. Finally, curve the branches of the bigger piece so they can attach on the sides of the smaller piece. And I think that looks pretty good. It's time to assemble the sides of the helmet, starting with the left side which is made from those four parts. First, I heat form the pieces. This piece needs a pretty pronounced bend right here. Now you can close up the darts from the two front pieces and then you can glue those two pieces together. After that, glue the two back pieces together but make sure the top edge of the bigger piece is lined up with the line drawn on the smaller piece. Then, when gluing the two assemblies together, make sure the line on the piece from the back assembly is flush with the edge of the piece from the front assembly. If you did everything correctly, this is what you should end up with. Of course, you'll also have to make a right side of the same assembly following the same steps. Here are all the pieces from the detail strip that goes at the back of the helmet. All you have to do is glue each piece edge to edge and this is what you should end up with. These triangular detail pieces need a beveled edge on the traced lines. I start by carefully removing most of the material using a box cutter and then I use my rotary tool to clean up the edges on both pieces. It's time to assemble everything. I start by gluing the triangular details on the big side assemblies we just made. Make sure your edges are flush and don't stretch or bend the foam. Once the two triangles are on, you can connect both sides together by attaching them to the center detail strip. The trick here is to attach the piece so that the inside seam is flush, making sure the layered effect on the detail strip stays exactly at the right level. And once you're done, this is what you should be left with. I think it looks great. It's time for the main event, attaching the top and bottom of the helmet together. I start at the front on one side and slowly move back until I get behind the ear, then I do the same on the other side. Now this has to be the hardest part of the build. You'll have to attach the back part behind the ear. Make sure you line up the traced lines on the back piece with the edge of the ear piece. This will ensure you're in the right spot. Once you're done with both sides, you have to attach the back at a 5mm inset from the detail strip on the dome. This is what you should end up with. And at this point, I was getting really excited to see the final result. The mouth grill is made from a piece of 5mm foam and 2mm foam. You can simply glue it on the bottom edge of the visor. It's finally time to glue on the front respirators to the helmet. But first I'll give it one more pass of heat forming just to make the peak in the center more defined. And now simply glue that piece on the front of the helmet. I start by connecting each side and then I move to the grill piece. And at this point I could not believe how good this helmet was turning out. Remember those two pieces from earlier? Well, forget them because the piece you'll get with your templates is this one, which is 8mm thick and is cut at an outward angle all the way around. All you have to do is glue it inside the helmet to fill the inside of the respirators. I really like how clean it makes the inside of the helmet look. Here are the parts for the ear details. The circles are 5mm foam and the rest is 4mm foam. All you have to do is glue the 4mm strips to the circles. Then carefully glue them on the helmet and make sure the front strip covers the visible seam. Once the ears are glued on, I remove the excess material and clean up my cuts with the rotary tool. You'll have to cut out two of this circle at an outward angle. Then you can clean up the cut edges and glue the pieces on the ear details on the helmet. To go over those circles, make the ear buttons out of 2mm foam and then just glue them on. This is the mohawk piece and you have to add a very shallow inward angle on both the front and back edge. I also cleaned up the cuts using my rotary tool. Then simply add on a thin strip of 2mm foam on each side and finally glue the mohawk to the dome about 1.5 inches above the detail strip on the dome. This circle detail goes on the back of the helmet and it needs an outward angle all the way around. So I remove the excess material and clean up my cut. There's also two dots and a line that need to be inset. I carved those details using a wood burner, but there's many other ways to get a similar look. The piece needs to go right here, but because the surface isn't flat, I had to carve out the back side of the piece with my box cutter so it fits better. Now simply glue it on, and that looks pretty good. 
The final details to add are those three little vents. I made them using small foam dowels and after gluing those pieces on the helmet, the building process is finally done. And I have to say, this helmet looks a hundred times better than what I initially expected. And I think it's mostly because of how nicely the template pieces fit together. There's just no stretching or compressing required. Now, it's time to prep the helmet for painting. And the first thing to do is to get rid of those visible seams. For that, I like to use a sanding stick with 80 and 150 grit sandpaper. The goal here is to get rid of the difference in height between the two sides of the seam. I found that using a sanding stick is much more efficient than using a sanding sponge or just sandpaper. Once all the seams have been leveled, I go over them with the heat gun to smooth out the surface. I do this pretty quickly to not run the risk of opening back the seams. Now let's fill the seams and imperfections. For that I like to use Liquitex modeling paste, but Quicksilk would also work. I start by applying the filler over a seam and then I smooth it out using water. Make sure not to put too much filler because it'll be much more noticeable than if you don't put enough. Because this type of filler shrinks when drying, I apply two coats of it. Once both coats are dry, I use different types of sanding tools and sand down the seam once again to clean them up even more. It's time for the scariest part of this build, which is as always cutting out the visor. Really take your time on this step because if you mess up, you might just have to start over. After cutting out the visor, I cleaned up the edges using my rotary tool and my heat gun. It's time to seal the helmet and for that I'll apply two good coats of grey Plastidip. Although Plastidip doesn't really fill in the imperfections, it does a great job at revealing them. So I use 320 grit sandpaper and carefully sand down the worst imperfections. Plastidip doesn't sand very well, but if you take your time you shouldn't have any issues. Next, I once again use the flexible filler to fill in the remaining imperfections. Once it's dry, I do a final pass of sanding before the next step. I want this helmet to be as perfect as possible, so I'll apply three good coats of filler primer over the whole thing to smooth out the surface. The footage for the next step got corrupted, but all I did was sand the filler primer until the helmet was perfectly smooth. And the final step before painting is to add one coat of regular primer to make sure all the imperfections have been sanded. For the base coat, I use a flat white spray paint and I apply three light coats. And I'm really happy with how smooth the helmet is. Most of the imperfections are now completely invisible. The next step is to paint the grey and black details. You can do this with a brush, but I used my airbrush. It gives a nice smooth finish, but the masking takes a long time. Now that the grey details are painted, it's time for the black details. If you're wondering, both the grey and black took 3 coats to get an opaque finish. Then I painted the teeth grey by hand and this also took 3 coats. And I also painted the 3 vent details by hand because masking those parts would have been a pain. And now you have a pretty nice looking clone helmet right off Camino. Doesn't matter if you're done with painting or not, I recommend sealing your work with a coat of matte clear. I want my helmet to be a 501st trooper helmet. So I did a lot of masking for all of the blue details. Then I used my airbrush to paint on the blue markings, but once again you could simply do it with a brush. After about 8 light coats, I could finally take off the masking tape. Unfortunately, some of the paint sneaked underneath the tape. To fix that, I just rubbed off the paint using a paper towel soaked in isopropyl alcohol. To make the paint chipping effect, I sprayed the same white spray paint as earlier in a cup and painted on the paint chips by hand. One coat wasn't enough to hide the blue, so I painted on two coats. To protect my work before weathering, I once again used my matte clear coat. The weathering process started with a black wash, but I only mixed a little bit of paint in a lot of water. I gradually added more and more paint, doing my layers of washes more selectively. I also added brown oil paint to add nice dirt and rust effects to the helmet. I applied the paint very selectively, removing the excess with a paper towel. And the last painting step is to dry brush some silver over the two front vents to give them a more realistic look. And of course, I once again sealed my work with the same matte clear coat. Then I glued in a tinted welding shield with contact cement to make the visor. And the last and final step was to glue in some upholstery foam inside the helmet to make it fit better. And with that done, you should now have your very own all EVA foam phase 2 clone trooper helmet.
Here is the final result and this time I could not be happier with how it looks. It's so close to the quality of a 3D printed helmet and it's much lighter and more durable. This is clearly not a project for a complete beginner but if you've already made a couple foam helmets before I don't see why you couldn't build this one. I know that the number of parts makes it look intimidating but they fit together so well and this tutorial video should help you a whole lot. So as I said at the start of the video the templates to make this helmet are available over on my Etsy store along with many others. And if you want to see more of what I do, things that don't always make it into my videos, you can go follow me on Instagram. All the links will be in the description. Oh, and since I made a new Clone Trooper helmet, I had to make a new Stormtrooper helmet, right? You might want to subscribe to not miss that video. But for now, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more cool builds like this one. And I'll see you in my next video.